So let's do a calculation based question for heat exchangers. So what we have here is a counter flow heat exchanger used to heat water at this specific heat capacity. So C sub P at constant pressure for water is 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So this value is not in the handbook. So I would memorize this for water or else it will be given to you on the FE. So we're taking this water and we're heating it from 288 Kelvin to 348 Kelvin and it's traveling at a mass flow rate of 65 kilogram per minute. So heating is accomplished by oil at this specific heat capacity 2.0 so 2.20 and we know the oil is entering at 388 Kelvin and leaving at 348 Kelvin. So we're going to assume the overall heat transfer coefficient is 320 and it's watt per meter squared Kelvin. So this is the overall heat transfer coefficient. So what we want to find first is the area of the heat exchanger. What area would satisfy these conditions when we design this heat exchanger? So the first thing I want to do is write what we're given. So let's begin that and define certain terms. So we know we are specifically given, we have a counter flow, right? A counter flow heat exchanger. And let's draw that real quick. So they do not give us an image, but we have to understand the difference between a counter flow and parallel flow. So this is a counter flow. Let me draw that here. So what we have is this shell on the outside and going to look something like this and what happens is we know we're heating water the goal here is to use the heat transfer principles to heat water and we know the water is going to travel horizontally because it's a counter flow and you'll see what we mean by that as we draw this system so we have a tube here Let's assume it's just one tube in this case and the water is traveling this way. So it enters from left and let's say it exits on the right here. So it enters here. This is the outlet and here. What do you think enters and what exits? It's the medium that's heating the water. So we know heating is accomplished by the oil. So what enters here, let me use this so the oil enters and the oil here exits so it's still oil so we know this is going to be a counter flow because what happens is the oil enters and it will travel in this way and it will also travel in this way to go down at the end to here right enters here and it wants to come out here so this is counteracting the direction the water is flowing right so water will flow this way this goes to the left this goes to the right that means it's counter flow but if oil let's say if we had the inlet here and the exit here for oil and let's say oil entered this way and it will try to go this way right it will try to go this way it will be in the same direction as the water it will be parallel flow just know the difference there in this case it will be counter flow because the direction is counteracting each other so that's what we mean by counter flow so we have a counter flow system and let's specifically write the numbers relating to each meter so blue is water and we know it's going to have this CP value so let's write that here so I'm gonna write CP for water is going to be 4 0.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and this water is entering at what temperature so it's 288 Kelvin so the temperature at the inlet here is 288 Kelvin and the exits we know at 348 temperature at the exit is 348 Kelvin the oil we know is going to be this CP value and it enters as 388. So the temperature here at the inlet is 388 Kelvin. 
and the temperature at the exit here is going to be 348 Kelvin and also we know the specific heat capacity for the oil CP oil is going to be the 2.20 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and we know the overall transfer coefficient, which is 320, will be the U value. This is defined in the handbook under heat exchangers for the heat transfer section. So just control F, you'll see U is defined as overall heat transfer coefficient. I'm just going to write U here, and it's 320 watt per meter squared Kelvin. And one last number I didn't include is 65 kilogram per minute. So that is going to be the mass flow rate of water. So the rate the this water is flowing, so it's mass per time, and it will be traveling this way. So it's going to be m dot, and it's 65 kilogram per minute. That's specifically for water. We do not know the one for oil, right? But we will determine that as we proceed. So first, let's find the area. So what I propose is using some equations in the handbook. So we know these are provided in the handbook. The rate of heat transfer in a heat exchanger is given by this equation. And this is for whatever medium we're looking at. We can do it for both the oil and the water. In this specific case, we will focus on the water because that's what we're trying to to heat up right water's traveling in this tube and we will focus on the water so that is that can be determined we can take the mass flow rate the cp for water given we know the exit and inlet temperatures so that's the rate of heat transfer this is also another equation that we can use for the rate of heat transfer and what we're going to do essentially here is find this q for water and take this q and plug it in here then we can find the area that's the overall process but we notice the second equation obviously has the area term that's why we have to use it so we have to use this equation F will be 1 so do not worry about the F value it's just a correction factor and it depends on the type of arrangement of the tubes and specifically when we have a shell and tube heat exchanger so let's assume F is 1 for this particular case as stated in the handbook a is what we're finding, U we know, and this delta TLM is going to be something we have to find. It's the log mean temperature difference. So we need to find this for counter flow, right? In the handbook, we're given a counter flow equation and a parallel flow equation. We want to focus on using this equation, which we will do that. So we're going to take that and actually plug it in here, then at the end, solve for A, because we can get Q by finding this Q, plug it in here. So we'll do all of that. And the last thing I want to talk about is the effectiveness ratio. So effectiveness is Q dot, which is the actual heat transfer rate, divided by Q max, the maximum possible heat transfer. So the effectiveness ratio will be important. It can actually determine how close are we to the maximum possible heat transfer rate. So let's say we know the effectiveness ratio we know the maximum possible heat transfer rate this allows us to actually determine the actual heat transfer rate so just know this is in the handbook and we can also look at the effectiveness ratio by using the following equations so now let's focus on solving the question we want to find the area let's state what we want to find we want to find the area and it has to be in units of meter squared so the solution here will first involve finding our Q dot. Actually, what I want to find first is the delta TLM, so the log mean temperature difference. So let's find that first, and let's call that step number one. So the equation delta TLM, this is in the handbook, is going to be, we take THO minus T to TH is hot and O is going to be for specifically the outlet temperature of the hot fluid. So hot fluid outlet temperature. So this is the cold fluid TC cold fluid inlet temperature. Then we do minus T hot fluid inlet minus T cold outlet divided by 
the natural log, we take a T hot outlet minus T cold inlet divided by T hot inlet minus T cold outlet. So just know this is the same as this and this is the same as this. So we know that T hot outlet, let's start plugging in the numbers here. T hot outlet will be the 348 Kelvin. Because we're looking at the hot meat hot medium or the hot fluid we're looking at it's the oil so the oil comes in at this hot temperature exits at this hot temperature even though it's somewhat lower it's still a hot temperature so this is the hot fluid oil this is at the inlet this is at the outlet so we know it's going to be 348 at the outlet this is the inlet here this is the outlet so it's 348 at the outlet so we plug that in here so we take 348 Kelvin then we take minus TC inlet so cold right cold we're looking at the water it's the medium with we're heating and this is the inlet right so it's 288 Kelvin so we take minus 288 Kelvin then we do minus the T hot inlet so that is 3 88 because this is the hot and this is the inlet so we take 388 then we do the minus T cold outlet which is going to be 348 right this value at the outlet for the water so 348 Kelvin so all of this divided by the natural log so this value is going to be this right T hot minus T cold. It's the same as this. So we just plug that in here on top. So 348 minus, let me keep the units, minus 288 Kelvin. Then we do this is going to be the same as this, which is this, right? 388 Kelvin minus 348 Kelvin. So now we can solve for the log mean temperature difference. Once again, this is for counter flow, right? We have to use that correct equation for counter flow systems for a heat exchanger. So for that, we should get about 49.33 Kelvin. So we have that value and we know then we can use the other equation that involves that temperature difference the log mean temperature difference which is this and the end goal is to find the area once again so let's state that equation let's call this step two and the equation is going to be q dot the heat transfer rate we take u a f delta t lm so we know we have this we're solving for A, we know F is 1, we're assuming 1, and we just found this. But we do not have Q dot. But we know we can find Q dot by using, let's say, this third equation. So Q dot equals to the first equation in the handbook, which is this. M dot CP temperature exit minus temperature inlet. So let's plug that. M dot. And the end dot we're going to focus on here is for water. Because this is the medium we're trying to heat. So be careful. So we're looking at water here. So it's going to be the M dot for water. Then we take the CP value for water. Then the temperature exit for water minus the temperature inlet for water. So now let's find Q dot and plug it back in here. So let's find this Q dot real quick. So M dot for water will be 65 kilogram per minute. But what I want to focus on is keeping it in, at the end I want units of kilojoules per second because we know watts, a watt when we have a watt for the U value, it's kind of confusing here, a watt will be what? a joule per second so a watt has units of seconds it doesn't have units of minute so you have to realize that so we want everything in kilograms per second we want the time unit to be seconds so I'm gonna convert this minutes to seconds 
So we know that one minute equals 60 seconds, right? So the CP for water is going to be what we have is 4.18. So you might have that memorized, 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And then the temperature exit for water is 348. The inlet is 288. So we just take 348 minus 288. And these are units of Kelvin. So now we can solve for Q dot. And for that, I believe we should get about 271.7 kilojoules per second. And we can convert this to joules per second by just multiplying by 1,000. So we get about 271700 joules per second. So that's the value here, and we essentially can plug that in here. And I use joules per second because I know, once again, the U value is given in watts. A watt is joule per second. I want joules and seconds. I don't want kilojoules. So now we can take this value, plug it in here, and solve for A. So if I take on the left side, I take 271700 joules per second. The U value we said is the 320 watt per meter squared Kelvin. So 320 watt per meter squared Kelvin. And again, a watt is a joule per second, so the units are okay. This is in joule per second, it matches. Then we have A, which is what we want to solve for. F, we're going to say is 1, as stated in the handbook. And delta T LM, the log mean temperature difference, is 49.33 Kelvin. So this has units of Kelvin. 49.33 Kelvin. So now we can solve for the area. And you just solve for A here, basic algebra. And when you, we solve for that, we should get about 17.21 meters squared. So this is our correct answer. And if we look above, the closest one, if we round up, should be D. So this is the closest answer. And I believe that's all for this one. It's just asking us to solve for the flow rate of the oil so I'll leave this up to you but let me give you a hint all we do here is perform an energy balance and we know that the energy in E dot in so we know it depends on the rate per time equals the energy out and when we are looking at this heat transfer phenomena we want to look at energy dot with respect to the mass flow rate the cp value and the temperature so it's the mass flow rate m dot the cp value times the temperature and this is the energy so we do that for the inlet and the outlet then we can have one unknown if you do all of that we will have the unknown for the m dot oil and that's what you want to solve for so you can solve for that by applying the energy balance once again at the inlet and outlet. So just look at the inlets and outlets and plug in the mass flow rate, CP values and temperature. And at the end you should arrive at a value for the Oriole. And for that we should get about B. That's it. Thank you.